That's our dog that you can hear tipped up and around. Welcome to How to Stay Married dot 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 so far. If you're listening on podcast, you can also see us on YouTube. Uh, just go to the Sawala Adelies and you can see our lovely little faces. Our lovely little married faces. We've been married 20 years. And I said to Mark a couple of days ago, oh, it's wedding season. Why don't we do weddings? I'll put a call out to Instagram. People, we can have a little play with like, if you had your time again, what would you change? Um, and yeah, quite some interesting things have come up for us, haven't they, over the last mm. few days as we've thought and talked about it. Mm. But I'm going to kick off with some of the responses from Instagram because I think it will be a good way, little mini launch pads into our own things that we... But I, I, I do want to just sort of like, I just want to stake my position on this from the outset. I, I was incredibly circumspect about this as a topic, but Nadia says a couple of things. It's wedding season <laughs> um, and... Um, I, I suppose I struggle when I think about our wedding, and we'll talk about it in more detail, to, you know, there's the practicalities. Whenever I think of weddings and think of regrets, yeah, there's going to be the regrets over perhaps this person invited or this sort of design of chair or look or food or practicalities, bridezillary type details. But for me, I do, I do always sort of end up thinking, well, a wedding was a wedding of its time, of the people of its time. And like, if you don't regret things in life, why would you regret your red wedding unless you've married the wrong person? No, I think it's a good point. And that's why it's been interesting over the last, and that's why we're sort of a day late recording this podcast. It was because we were sort of thinking, what does it mean? What does it mean? So uh, that's why I wanted to start with just the nuts and bolts, um, because I know people will be tuning in for actual wedding advice and funny bits and serious bits. But also, Mark and I, when we've looked at our wedding, it's not so much regrets, though we do have them. It's we've realizations. It's realizations mm. about who we were, the sadness attached to some of that. The looking back and the way that we ran our whole wedding and the way that our wedding was, it, it is very indicative of our ADHD, addiction, all sorts of things going on. Mm. And so that's what we found really interesting, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But first of all, overwhelmingly, most of the most answers that we got was, if I could change anything, it'd be the groom. Got hundreds of those. No one said the bride. One, there was one from the bride, from a man, and he said, I, probably the bride. No. But when I think about it, there isn't anybody else that would have put up with me. Fair so is. he was the only one that had a... And threw himself under but, the bus. But, uh, yeah, who had a butt to it. OK. Um, so, OK, so first of all, let's... I'm just going to reel off a few advice ones, and then we're going to get to the to the stickier stuff. Um, I didn't know people do, did this. I definitely wouldn't go on honeymoon at 4 a.m. the next morning. I think that is a good bit of advice. You can get caught up with the whole wedding thing where mm. you think everything is, in, everything is possible. Mm. And if you actually think about it, would you go to an all-day party and then get up at 2.30 in the morning to go and get a flight? So, but it, within this, I have a regret, a big regret, in that the wedding was all done at our house... And then we stayed in our house with loads of people and our bedroom was totally turned upside down. We couldn't even get into it. You probably won't remember this. I was pregnant and like couldn't get my dress off. And I think it was a horrible way a uh, uh, wedding night that well uh, yeah I mean if I have I would have liked a nice hotel. I mean if I think about regrets, I've had a few. Um yeah, I can see, again, so we're getting sort of pragma practical things here. I absolutely agree. I think, you know, this idea that you, you, you sort of, you get married and then the next day you fly straight off, which is terrible because you're, I mean, you weren't because you were pregnant, but hungover and all of the kind of, there's so many sort of loose ends, aren't there? I mean, there were people literally in the grass verge across the road stumbling around. They'd fallen asleep yeah. in bushes and shit had kicked off and stuff had happened and it had been great, but there, there was a lot of drama and a lot of stuff that had gone on. So yeah, the idea that then bleary-eyed, we, we flew off and we were both in the middle of ongoing projects that required us to fly around the world and film stuff. So we even had to call our honeymoon off. Yeah, the whole thing was a total manifestation of it. us. Yeah, it was a manifestation of us, exactly. Um, this is a good one, actually. I wouldn't have spent so much. Um, 
I would have used it towards um, a mortgage. Now, honestly, people that are in the midst of organising your wedding, I cannot tell you how many people have said that to me through my life. Mm. I wish I hadn't spent so much. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got to... We watch Vanderpump Rules all the time, oh, don't God, we? We're yeah. just fascinated by how Jacks. these brides are engagement. They want this and they want that mm. and they want this. And, they want, and it's thousands and thousands clocking up, clocking up, clocking up. It, it never goes well for those first few years of marriage. Plus also, there's always the possibility the, how to stay married so far of it, of it all being what But the it? hangover of overspending yeah, yeah, yeah. affects your relationship. Mm. Do not mm. get into debt. Make it smaller. Make it the small... I mean, we we, we didn't have loads of money no. and we did it at home and it mm. was so much of what people loved about our wedding was that it was done at well, home. Well, it was very garden. homely. I mean, there, 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 you know, as many as... As there are many things that one could potentially regret, there are many things that are brilliant. I mean, we're incredibly grateful to your mum and Dina. They did such a lovely yeah. uh, family... Mm. Uh, homely, Home. warm mm. and real kind of, you know, had a real sensibility to it. There, there was no issues around any of that. That was all just absolutely lovely. And it was like feeling, I mean, you were used to it because you were, you know, Nadia Suara off the telly. But it was like feeling like, oh, wow. And I guess this is what a lot of people get from weddings is you feel like for that moment, you're the, yeah. oh, wow, we're the people kind of stars. People are the star of the Not show. Not in an egotistical way, but, but it's like, oh, this is But nice. if being the star of the show means that you're paying mm for this bloody castle, when actually... We've got a bouncy castle could just you, there. Could you do it in your local church hall mm. and have all your friends and everything help to, to put it up? Because what... Who, if, if you're trying to impress people, really ask yourself that question, who am I trying to impress? Isn't it about feelings? Yeah, and go back to the feelings because you can really lose the feeling. We were very lucky because we didn't, because we were we not paying like attention that. to detail. It was about. I, 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 can I can I share my biggest regret of the day? Mm. My biggest biggest regret is that I I stepped in at no point, said nothing to anyone, didn't object to, put up a fight against the staggeringly stupid size of my tie knot. I look at photos, and this is true. We haven't got, and we haven't got many. And I think, and we haven't got many. And I think, what a fucking I twat! Loved it. What a twat! What a twit! I almost sometimes worry, not that this was the case at all, that someone was having a joke because I look stupid. You and that's you my lovely. wedding day. It was the fashion at There's the time. There's a nice photograph of me on the doorstep with Dina, which I really, really like. But I look in a, a burk. You don't. I really hated the way I looked, and we've had quite a few of those. I hated the way I look. I was pregnant, I was just, I just, I, I look at, we've only got a few photos. Do I look at those photos and think I look awful? Actually, I don't. I, I hadn't got hair and makeup, I'd beautiful. forgotten it. So I just had my hair just stuck with loads of pins. I you just didn't popped. just have it stuck, you looked stunning. I said it the other night, You, your dress and how you came out, you were an absolute vision. And you were Aww. pregnant and you were going, okay. about to become the mother of my time. No, for me... It was the perfect article. You were just everything oh, a man could have hoped for. That. Can make me so cry. it was no. I mean that 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 was. I mean I regretted everyone else was at the fucking wedding, but you know, apart they from me, no, no, I didn't really. Um, um, yeah. So uh, you know, don't just try really hard to rein in how much you're spending, guys, because you will regret it. Um, now, this is interesting, going back to what you said, Mark. The venue, they didn't deliver on a number of really key moments. This is where it can get a bit crazy. It's like, I want it to work this way, and I want it to be on this time, and I want all the photos to Schedules. be Schedules. That, I think, I think that is where you can make yourself ill with a wedding, and also your guests. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there always someone else kind of sorting that for you? Or is it... Well, that's what she said. You know, she didn't like the venue because they didn't do it. So, you know, they didn't do mm. what they were going to say they were, they, they were going to do. And so she regrets that. She mm. regrets the venue. We were quite lucky with that. I mean, insofar as we got married in the little library at Dulwich College, I, I tell you something that I really regret we didn't do. But this, again, was after the event. Was the, was the uh, wedding cake. That was terrible. Huge wedding. regret that we they didn't kick up one. an absolute oh, fuss. Oh, did I had a meeting with well, them. No, I didn't. No, no, no. You had a meeting, but we didn't get what we asked for. Yeah, no, we got a brown cake, brown and beige. Well, well Dina we just with it. Poor Dina, because she'd arranged that. If it that. wasn't for a, a family friend constructing little kind of director chairs and, and, and what have you for the top of it, it was a. It was. 
Even I stood there without any comprehension of what weddings were about. I've been to a few. Um, I thought, what the fuck's that? And I thought, oh, this is my wedding. It's brown. It was so weird. We Nothing to put a knife pastel through. Colours. We didn't have that moment. I, I regret not having that moment. I regret not having that moment. Oh, because we had cupcakes? Yeah. Oh, God, I never knew that you regretted... Oh, I don't want yeah. cupcakes. No, I really wanted that moment where we did the knife. Mm, I'd have liked that. If I'm honest. But why didn't you bloody say if that? I, if I'm honest, I actually feel really cheated. Well, we'll do that when we renew our vows. We'll have a cake. I pensioned. never even thought about that. No. I've never thought so about that So the idea once. that you went over to a, a wedding cake and you picked up individual little bite-sized things... Pff, I don't know. Oh, my God, I never thought no. about that. Isn't that interesting? Right, so this one... This lady says, we had a re one of her regrets, she could change anything. We had a registrar with a terrible stutter. I went into fits of giggles during. Now, I think, I would suggest to you, is that also one of your favourite memories? The it's like the things that went wrong. Absolutely. Like, are some of the things, like when the guy fell into all the flower wall and the flower wall collapsed. You hit the nail on the head. That the was so funny. I the loved guy, it. The guy who walked into one of the wooden struts holding up the marquee, so hard he fell backwards like Charlie Chaplin and talked like a proper conventional drunk. It was so funny. And it then the brilliant. dance floor was really like this. It was really, it wasn't flat. There was so, a bubble. Which was annoying, but we did, so many people fell over and it was really funny. Well, and also it was actually, it was the one moment my nan, Nanny Thelma, realised I could dance and she was shocked. But the reason I think I kind of looked like I could dance better than I probably could was because I was negotiating the undulations in the dance floor. You yeah. Had, you had to move. You yeah. had to use your hips. This is a big one for us, and this is a sad thing, actually. Uh, to get a professional photographer, Uncle Knobhead gave <laughs> us one printed copy and deleted the digital. Uncle Knobhead, is this that what is they what call she them? Said, yeah. <laughs> so that did make me laugh, but my God, and this makes me really sad mm. because this was really, I have such poor organisational skills, that's why I left the wedding to my mum and my sister. But we were both distracted, we didn't focus on anything, and we got a photographer very last minute, and we had said we didn't want to do any formal photographs. We didn't want people just standing for ages, like hungry and thirsty. We wanted to just to catch people, almost like documentary. paparazzi style. Yeah, documentary. So like people are just caught and they're just like having fun, and that's what we wanted, like. And we only discovered recently on Coffee Moaning that actually what she asked for is what all photographers ask for, which, she, which is that they own the copyright. So we got to the wanting our photographs and she said we had to sign this copyright thing that she owns the copyright. And we were like, why would you own the copyright of our photos? Right, okay. well, and I... we didn't sign it. And so we didn't get off. We got into a big argument and we never got our photos. Now, the photos we've got are like, a, it's like, a, it's not a contact sheet, but it's like two books of kind of smaller, lower quality photo. I didn't realise, life got so busy that we couldn't follow up on this. But, but we had the argument and then we never got our photos. Yeah, but what I don't understand is, okay, Pete, I, I, this really annoys me generally in life when people do this. They go, oh, but that's how it is. I'm, okay, that might be how it is, but it's not how it should be. Why? We've paid you. you. No, but anyone, you, if any you, of you have taken that, you know, why are you, why? Why have you got the copyright of our photos? Why would you want the copyright of someone else's photo? But I, everyone says that's what you have to do with wedding photos. Why? I don't, no, well, I'm not. Well, anyway, we didn't, I'm we not, dealt with it motivated. to a point and then, again, we're, we're, we talked about looking back and where we fuck up, we fucked up in life and then there's Attention so many situations detail. where we're fucked up in life because we haven't followed through with shit mm. and we've been walked all over in many different situations and we've lost money and we've done all sorts of things and this was one of those situations. We didn't persist until we got our photos. So we don't have our wedding photos. I we've might got pick a few up. photos, but we don't oh. have wedding photos and it makes me so sad. Bear with me. Sorry. And then we did this thing where we put all these cameras, disposable cameras, on the tables so that people could take photos, but everyone got so pissed. Well, Not one cheat. of them could you use. Sorry, I'm just, just <laughs> he's running around, I don't know what I'm he's doing. I'm the audio and I'm just, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, that was a nice idea, the kind of disposable automatic kind of camera. Oh, I've got some, I've got them somewhere. It's just loads of out of focus shit. Absolute shit. So don't bother with that. That's no, an expense. Um, another woman here oh, sent me a message. 
the things she would change, and I felt this was really sad. Him groping <sighs> his ex on the dance floor at the oh reception. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? Groping his ex? Horrific. I mean... That, I mean, can you imagine all the levels of sadness? For that, for something like that to happen at your wedding on the day that, never mind a day where you're supposed to, a day where everyone's supposed to be, a day when you're, a day when you're supposed to feel loved and cherished. Mm. And an asshole can do that. I was just, oh. Well, I mean, that kind of opens up a little something that perhaps I'd, I'd like to talk about, which is I regret that I wasn't at the time, I, I wasn't sober, I hadn't gone into recovery, I hadn't even, you know, I, I wasn't even talking about alcoholism or anything like that. You know, a, a regret I have that I wasn't more boundaried, to use that therapy speak, but in this instance, more boundaried with certain individuals in my life who sought to uh, erode or eat into the enjoyment of the day. They didn't, but I can think of... Well, they did a bit. Well, I can think of three people who really, really made a point of aggravating or trying to aggravate the day in a, the most pernicious of fashions. And, and so my regret is that I, I couldn't go back or that I didn't have the wherewithal or the capacity or the whatever you want to call it. But again, it was a different time. It was 20 years ago to kind of go, no, this is this is the line. This is what's happening yeah. here. This is what's happening here. This is how I'd like you. Not about the arrangement or organisation. It was about personalities People. and how they presented themselves. For example, a small detail. This really pisses me off, actually. So, you know, someone very close to me, it was very important for them that, that they wanted to see me getting married. And someone else who we knew at the same time decided it was the occasion to announce they were getting divorced. Yeah. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. Why don't you save that information for another time? Because what you've just done is you focus pulled, you shat on that person's you know, day, you know, day of just enjoying, you know, that their was loved one. So, so it was awful. such a horrible Imagine thing to do. Imagine announcing your divorce at a wedding. Yesterday on Coffee Morning, we were talking about people that propose um, at a wedding and does that pull focus. And this particular person that announced their divorce ruined it. Ruined mm. the day for this person who was having the most wonderful, wonderful day. the best time that they'd had in years. Yeah. Another person that we knew. And it was just horrendous. Horribly selfish and self I can only imagine that they were upset about the joy and needed the focus on them. But yeah. that, and this comes up a lot in the messages on Instagram. They would rethink their, their invite yes. list. Nah. And you know, when the, when the, um, uh, the, bills are rising and you're getting more and more worried about how much money you're spending on the wedding look again and think how many people here do i really really want there's one woman here who said i wouldn't have invited my mother-in-law 10 seconds into the first dance she took my husband off me to dance with her Oh, and that's that boundary family, thing family again, family. isn't it? Ideally, I mean, the things oh. that can happen on a wedding day that can show you what the future is going to be like. Because mm, if my dad, say, for instance, had come and take and tried to take me off you when I was dancing the first time, I would have gone, Dad, let me just get to the end here with my... You know, that he would ever do anything like that. And yet this person's husband couldn't do that for her. If I have a big regret, and this is a big regret, and this is a big thing I'm about to say, actually. In terms of regrets around people that you invite, I was so chaotic and my social circle was so sort of plugged into a self-damaging cycle of addiction and alcoholism and and being a, you know, being a sort of loose man, if you like, and all, it was so chaotic that I, I, I could probably say that 95% of the people I invited, I wish I hadn't, or I regret having invited. Terrible fact. But, no, you were drinking then, and so a lot of the people that you invited were your friends at no, that I time, know, and they I were know. drinking as well. No, 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 it wasn't that, but when I think back, when I look back, and I'm, I'm not just talking about... I think about, a lot I'm of not, people do that. I'm not just talking like, about friends, got... I'm talking about extended family as well. Yeah. I'm sort of thinking... You know what? When I look back, and I'm quite happy about saying this, you were simply there hating, hating the fact 
that something nice was happening for me. Mm. Sorry, I don't even, I, I can think of so many and, 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 and they all are more. You know what? I re- you're right, you made a really interesting point. When I look back at that wedding, so many things came true. Mm. So many things. <gasps> and so on the one hand, I regret them being there. In fact, I do regret them being there. I regret the fact that they were allowed to come to something. Because as I said to you, actually, there are so many things about our wedding that I find really upsetting and distressing and frustrating and disappointing and surprising and shocking. Things that were said, things that were, you know, feelings and sensibilities. And what gets me about it, and yet it's still the most special day of my life. And I think this is why I regret all those other aspects so much. Because what I felt, felt so real for the first time in my life. Mm. It felt so good, going back to how I saw you. Wow, this was something that, this was, this meant something. Mm. And then to now know what I now know and to see what I have since seen and to have come to an understanding of what I was just a very distant sort of voice of possibility back then. And it's been crystallized as a fact I trust my instinct on virtually everyone I meet now. It makes me really, really angry and sad and also proud that we have worked our way through what we've worked through. Because you know what? I know who you were and I know how you were looking at us. And I love the fact that you got it wrong. Sorry, wow. just had to fucking say and that. And you said you had nothing to say about marriage. I don't know where that came weddings. from. But you know what? You know what? When I think of the day, and you know, I had lots of lovely family and friends there and everything, but the true high moments were, and I can remember feeling, I can almost, and I can remember feeling really scared at the same time I was having these moments. What if Mark's not feeling them as well? Was like, I truly, truly felt like, oh my God. This is so extraordinary that I'm marrying this man. And I don't know if that came out ever to anyone in any way whatsoever, because they were almost like private moments in me. Mm. It was really strange. It was just like this swell of like, you know, and I was pregnant as well. So it was just like, and I kept feeling panicked and I kept feeling, looking at you and thinking, does he, does he feel that Mm. I was watching you in, in this sort of, hyper focus watching you and wondering whether it was real uh, and I can also see looking back bipolar moments for you where I saw you drop out mm. drop out of the feelings and look really sort of like, like when, when some things went a bit weird and you were like really oh god this isn't what I wanted to happen and there was a lot of dealing with different people um, from your life and from like and you know like how much how much is just like making everybody feel good and feel great. And, and, and so when you boil it down, when you boil it down, and there's a number of people that say this, I wish I had been comfortable standing somewhere on a beach, in a forest, mm. in a thing, just somewhere and just doing it with this person. And I wondered that why that's a lot of people will do um, renewals mm. in quite a small way because mm. actually... Do we get to distill it down to the feeling that we have? And I did have those feelings and those feelings are here and those feelings grew. And everything that happened on that day that was wrong, we've seen through our lives. Mm. It it is there. It's it's like a, it was like a, 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 what's it called? Crystal ball. Crystal ball. Uh, A crystal ball into our lives and the mistakes we've made in our lives, the crystal ball of people in our lives. It was all there to see. Mm. It's like, it's really odd. It's like a time So maybe capsule. when people talk about the regrets and you can get into, God, are we talking about the details of whether mm, I had a car mm, and whether mm, I had gingerbread snacks and whether I had this. Yeah. Actually, maybe what we are all doing when we say that is like, that's where I was as a person. Mm. You know, and I think when we look back at our wedding, we see ourselves as the people we were. We did have a big open heart about our wedding. We really genuinely mm. did. And people were invited with a, let's all just like have a party and have fun. And yet you forget that sometimes people don't have compersion 
don't have just the joy for somebody else's mm. joy. Mm. And I think we have many, many faults, you and I. We are fuck-ups. There is no doubt about that. But I can tell you one thing that I can put my hand on my heart for is that we do have joy for other people's mm. joy. Mm, absolutely. We are not people that go, no. oh, God, well, I wish they weren't. No, it's and, weird. and I think it doesn't matter who you are or how you get married, everybody has that feeling from some people after their wedding. And it's... Unless you keep it really small, that, mm. that is what can happen. And I would also go back and say, because of course, in that sort of little sort of you know explosion that came out of me, God knows fuck what happened there. But it was really important is that obviously all of our problems in our marriage and our relationship, all the mistakes happened after getting married. That's not to say that it, it's not like we got married; it was all idyllic, and I saw this. Oh and, God, no, no, but no, that was the alcoholism, pre, that was the pre my, my, all the horror, my craziness with my yeah. My addiction. ADHD, my chaotic, my inability to organise all those things that were through my life were present in my wedding because we don't become a different fucking person on no. a wedding day. And my point is, is that those people who, who you could sense and feel didn't want it to be the thing that we felt it could be, knew all those things were coming. And what, I, what is so interesting about the, the, the journey is that, yeah, I intercepted all those obvious fucking pitfalls and mistakes. It was on the ropes. We were on the ropes. We were hitting skid. You know, oh, we they'll, never skidding yeah, they'll never make they'll it. They'll never make it. And in a weird months. way, you know, my biggest regret again. And I do think you're absolutely right that this is why people, in a sense, renew their vows. And perhaps when they do, they do it in such a small way, is because actually the only thing that managed to survive and come out of that was the graft we've both put into something we both knew was there. And my regret Those is... Those moments that we if felt if it's a regret, that day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if, my, if the regret is there, it's the regret that I didn't have this hindsight knowledge that I could mm. get through. I mean, if I actually now think of going back to our wedding and then having to go through everything I've gone through to get to here, I don't think I could do it. I mean, not in a horrible way. What do you mean? Way. I don't think... I don't think... If I had to do again what I had done subsequent to us getting married through addiction, recovery... Oh, yeah. ...jealousy, what, yeah, work, everything, I, 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 as a human, I haven't spiritually got the energy to do that again. Thank God I did it, and it's... I'm mm. touch wood for now, today. It won't always last so far. You know, we're OK. But I don't know, I just... It's weird. I, it's weird, that feeling it, that I've got from people who theoretically are on your team and actually they're only close to you because they want some, for some reason, something in themselves confirmed that it won't work because they don't want it to work because they don't want to see it for someone else. It's weird. Mm. It's weird. It's sad, but what is but the thing weird. that we learn through life? And I've just been having this very conversation with our daughters, you know, about toxicity and mm. about... You know, we're like, oh, I don't want toxic people. I'm like, oh, I don't want toxicity. You know, but how much action do we actually take for that? Mm. And I think, you know, we have been... It's interesting because, you know, though there is chaos and there is lack of organisation following through, we have been very committed to protecting ourselves mm. and our relationship. Actually, mm. when you think about it, I mean, mm. this is coming to me now. Mm. We are very protective of it. Mm. We, 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 we don't. Like, sometimes when I hear people go, oh, I've got to go here and I've got to be with these people and I've got to go away for this weekend with these people and, oh, God, we don't like them. And I think, oh, my God, we don't have anyone like that in mm. our lives. Mm. We just don't. Mm. Unless we really like people and we really love people and we, we are joyful for them and the joy, we just don't have it. Mm. We, we don't. So we, we have remedied so much since our wedding day. Mm. But also those feelings that I had of a real high, like of feeling that love and feeling that it was just so exciting that this amazing man, you know, and I was <sighs> ma marrying this amazing, incredible man. This stupid tie knot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I liked your suit. I mean, I did. So, you know, and I loved the colour. It was deep, Yeah, the colour. I like the colour of the suit. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. But I wish now you hadn't had the tie because it explains a lot of, like, your discomfort. Now, now when I know you so well, because I didn't know you very well when we got married. Like, sometimes I want you to take <sighs> off a particular T-shirt because I can see you doing <laughs> all of this stuff. These All Saints ones that you like that do this. And I'm like, I wish you'd just change that fucking mm. T-shirt because mm. he's not in the room. And, and so, like, you know, when, when I met you at the thingy you know you you were just standing there and i knew you were in the Delta. agony of heat mm. and the tie <laughs> so you weren't really a, you would sit you'd I written these beautiful pregnant. vows but you were hot you were hot 
In a you good were way? just no, hot. No, in a good way. I was just hot. <laughs> um, I regret how hot I was. It's interesting because one of the messages that we got in was say, I would... Re- I would have wanted my husband to turn round at the altar and look at me as I walked up, but his brother had told him not to. And I thought, oh my God, so this brother's probably done this going, don't look, don't look. But and she's like, turn around and look at me. She's walked all the way up the altar. Because a lot of women, that's a big thing, yeah, isn't it? Moment. That walk up the altar. I get that didn't, visually. It's he this, didn't turn shot. around and look at her. I also and doesn't I have just that memory. Thought, but, but, you know, so you could go, oh, we've been quite here. It wasn't looked... But these are moments that mm. you build on those moments. And that just to go back, track back to what I was saying about I got moments of real sadness in on in the de- on the day and, and at the night and the, the next few days. Because I f- and now I understand it. I felt when you were dropping out that you were regretting it and that you were unhappy with the fact that we got married. But mm. of course, now I know you so well. This is what you do all mm. through every day. Mm. You drop out emotionally you because you get these lows. It was the bipolar. We didn't know you had bipolar then. But I, but I remember stealing myself. I remember this on honeymoon as well, just going, OK, so he's... Because I didn't know. I just thought, he's got, like, some serious regrets here. <laughs> Well, no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, regrets, that's what we're i tell you what, I, I regret feeling back then, and this is going to sound really fucking gobbledygook, I regret not feeling more worthy. Yeah. And I think if there were, if you were feeling... And you're still making yes, that mistake in our marriage to this minute. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, it's not in our marriage, I make that mistake in everything. No, um, but we're talking about the wedding no, 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 and the marriage. No, 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 I know, but I'm just saying, that's me, I mean, that's, the, you know, and, and so... You know, if I if I have a regret, it's that I I think I perhaps had built things up to a point where I thought, oh my god, this is this is quite a role great. to kind of fucking live up to this one. Um, and so I think what you would have perhaps felt was, yeah, there were the uh, mood swing type things going on. There was the alcohol, there was the drugs, there was everything going on. But there was also, um, you know, a, when I say well-meaning, it doesn't present as well-meaning, but it was coming from a place of low self-esteem. Yeah, but for me, it was really scary yeah, because I I, I'd made this commitment. I was pregnant. I was like, I was much more insecure in those days. And I think that I felt the time I felt it most keenly, where I really remember, where I can remember having those first feelings about this thing that you do was on our wedding day. Mm. Wow. And maybe it's just because I was more attuned because everything was a whirlwind. Well. I was sober because I was pregnant. Very annoying. Um, but but it all been a whirlwind mm. up to there, wasn't it? We were back mm. and forth. We were filming all over the place. We were here. We were living there. We were living. And so I knew there was something going on for you, but I didn't know what. And then it hit me on my wedding day. Mm. Our wedding day. Oh, I hate saying that wedding. Oh, God, maybe he doesn't feel these things. Mm. Maybe these people that are whispering about this isn't going like, to last are right. Um, no, I think I probably thought the same and thing. And so I reversed a bit. I shut my heart down a bit on that. D- I, remember my, I remember standing in my parents' place and just feeling this incredible high, like huge surge. And then I was looked across at you and you just looked a bit something. You were probably just hot from your tie. Oh, I was. And I just went... <coughs> I just, like, closed a bit. I just thought, no, protect yourself here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. That's big. But you know what's really interesting, Mark? This is just so fucking fascinating to me, is that... I didn't want to do this. I'm still getting those feelings of, like, will he be able to ever trust and commit? Because... Because of that very thing that you just said yourself, I never feel worthy. You, I still am reaching for that with you, because well, I it. think it's the key. You, you, yeah, you get much, but I think it's the key to a deeper happiness for us. We are a, ha- a happy couple. What do you mean? We, we have a good marriage, but but I hope that there is a future where. There is total acceptance. I want that confident person that I see sometimes. 
But if you see them sometimes, you get them sometimes. But not I everyone's one often. thing all the time. I want no, not all the time, but I want him more often, and it is improving. But you said it. It was it was that I'm not worthy. You are worthy of having a good no, relationship. You are worthy. Yeah, no, 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 no. But at the time, you are I worthy believe... of being loved. All no, those I agree. things. I, you I, are... I'm getting that. I'm getting that. But at the time, very much at the time. Oh, it's you know, so much better. Than the it the was. beating drum and narrative around me, which I signed up to, I, I encouraged and I, I developed and I, I built and constructed for myself was one of unreliability and movability. And you know, he's always kind of. And on then the suddenly you were stuck in a place. And, I was and the love of avoidant yeah. kicks yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah, the love yeah, dependent who wanted to be loved and all these things suddenly gets it and goes and removes mm. and that's what you do it's weird I keep having this thought at the moment which is really odd is that whatever has happened in my life I think it's really important to remind myself and sometimes our dear followers who are so lovely if I hadn't done the thing that I'd done which is stop drinking and drugging categorically I would be dead yeah I would not be sat here now. Yeah. I'd be dead. I'd have committed suicide or I would have, you know, in an accidental fashion, but semi-accidental through drink and drugs and what have you, killed, died. I, whatever I do and however I am and whatever relationships I have and whatever I can bring to anything is, has to be understood in terms of, thank fuck, I'm alive. Because I would, if I hadn't made many of the choices that I've made in my life, mm. I wouldn't be. And I suppose, you know, why am I saying that? And there were a number when of times in the first few years of our marriage where you could have died. Yeah. I mean, died, you know, the, in the sense that you just weren't able to look after yourself, put yourself in really dangerous situations. It was very fucking scary. Very, very fucking scary. Uh, yeah. So I don't know where that comes into the regrets, but when I look back at our wedding, I do see it, it, it's a curious. It's a, it was. I suppose it's about it being a. It was a moment in time as well. It was twenty years ago, earlier from where we are now. Nineteen years, eighteen years sober this year. We have two grown children. You know, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Wow, I didn't want to do this. I didn't see any richness in this topic at all. How are you feeling? Are you all right? I feel like you're sad. Um, oh. sad. A bit. I want to give you a hug. No, it's not. I'm not sad. I'm just. Oh you know, when people mm. say I'm not sad. I'm emotional. It's mm. just like emotions. Oh, sweet. Emotions just rise, don't they? You know, and it's not easy to think that you could have. Oh, sorry. You I know that to... you could have. That something could have happened to you in those first few years, and just. And, you know, and looking back over 20 years and you just, and yeah, it's a lot. It's like you just said, I couldn't do that again. I couldn't do that 20 years again. It's like, it's such hard work mm. with many, many highs and lows. A marriage is hard work if you want it. If you want a meaningful, deep and intimate relationship, you know, if you want to just like skate around the edges with each other and not really get to the root of anything, and then it doesn't have to be that, it doesn't have to be hard work, but I would find that even harder work. But if you want to try and, try and fix some of the shittiness about yourself and... Can yeah, I... Can a marriage, a marriage... A marriage holds up a mirror to you and it, a lot of a marriage is, is like not wanting to look, not wanting to look, not wanting to look. And the wedding day had a lot of not wanting to look, mm. not wanting to look, not wanting to see what, where I am in my life and what am I doing and why am I doing it this way. And then the rest of the marriage has been like that. Mm. Mm. I just want to say something to you though, that... That embodiment of something I never thought I would meet or find or who would feel what you felt for me back then. I can't even begin to imagine how you've managed to not only stay that, but become even more than that. Truly, you're, she is, we've got all our naysayers, she is a fantastic mother. You are a fantastic wife. You are a fantastic daughter, sister. You have done everything you can 
with a kind art. It's not to say you don't make mistakes. We all make mistakes, but you own them. And so, you know, for me, it's just like, wow, there was something there and I don't know how you've managed to stay. You, you, you know, and that constancy, I sometimes think, I, I, I do still go, fucking hell, man. Wow, that's quite something to be. So I doff my cap to that. Because I, 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 I couldn't be that constant, haven't been that constant. Yeah, I'm trying to be that. constant. You're but, you joking. Know, I've tried to Are put things, but I've tried to put things in place that were Thank evident, you. as you rightly say, on that wedding day, to make that slightly more constant for everyone who, who I know loves me and, and cares for me. So, but I just wanted to say that because you know you, you, you have, you are, you, you're one of a kind. Thank you. Thank you. And you know. <laughs> I have never known anyone that takes accountability in the way that you do. You, you have completely fucking attacked every one of those things that was making you swirl and twirl on that day, you know, alcoholism, addiction, trauma, PTSD, everything. You, you, you look at yourself constantly. You are constantly trying to fix where you've done wrong. You apologise like no other fucker on, on this earth. And by accident, it appears that at the end of this podcast, we've done completely organic vows to each other. <laughs> One top tip at the end of this for anyone getting married. Have someone who stands at your entrance to your doorway who's paid to slap people who are really annoying. <laughs> because it would be very satisfying in the years to come when you think, yeah, I always felt that about them, actually. Just have someone there, as they leave, slap. Obviously, don't do that. Anyway. But thank you for your lovely words, and I really feel the same way about you, so... Maybe there was something <laughs> right about that day. Next week, or in the next episode, we may be talking about an argument that nearly led to us separating. So this is very, very one day at a time. Yeah, guys. fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs>